Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Pastor Mai, good evening. It's half past five. This is update for Wednesday, 11th of October, 2023, from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the Isle of Man. Background to that news and sport, business, sea watch, travel updates, and the newsmakers in person. This evening, deaf ministers confident on the food supply, Manx Care tackling a two year wait at Hillside Dental, a new approach to illegal drugs, 800 school students attend the STEM Fest, and UNESCO Biosphere Isle of Man celebrates five years. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Faster my Siobhan Fletcher. Faster my. The Chief Minister has reiterated government's commitment to working with Manx farmers following the sale of ShopRite to Tesco. The Manx National Farmers Union had said Monday's announcement was as much breaking news to the island's agricultural and food production industry as it was to everyone else. Elsewhere, government says it's seeking to understand the long term intentions that Tesco has for the Isle of Man. The Enterprise Minister has described the retail giant takeover of ShopRite stores as a shock, saying there'd been no proper dialogue about the move. The first herring have been landed in Douglas under a landmark agreement between the Isle of Man and UK governments. The vessel Our Sarah Jane has brought 12 tonnes of herring ashore as part of an initial quota of 100 tonnes. Further afield, more than a 1,000 people have now died on each side since Saturday's onslaught, including nine UN workers killed by Israeli's airstrikes in Gaza. Power there has now been cut off. Luton Airport has reopened after a huge fire partially destroyed a multi-storey car park. 150 flights and 30,000 passengers are estimated to have been disrupted. And Rafael Nadal says he can't confirm he'll return to tennis at the Australian Open. The tournament's organiser said had stated he'd be back in January. Day headlines, news at six. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Jeremiah, thank you. Siobhan from the Ronalds Way Met Office. No wind warning in operation for the North Irish Sea. State of sea, smooth or slight. And this evening's weather, partially cloudy. It will be dry after dark, some clear spells. And in sheltered places, it'll get down to five degrees through the night. For tomorrow, Thursday, Jordan, dry with sunny intervals, a light southwesterly blowing up to 13 Celsius. Cloudy overnight into Friday as the wind picks up to moderate, bringing patchy rain, minimum nine. And for Jehenya, a cloudy start with light intermittent rain, then dry with bright spells on a fresh to strong west or northwest wind, high as 13 on Friday. Low water was about 40 odd minutes ago. Sunset is at 29 minutes before 7. High tide 19 minutes to 11. Low tide 18 minutes after 5 tomorrow morning. Sunrise 20 to 8. And the morning high water at 19 minutes past 11. Max Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. The Minister of Environment, Food and Agriculture says she's confident the Isle of Man will be able to have a consistent supply of food when Tesco takes over the ShopRite stores. The supermarket giants agreed to buy all nine locations and they'll be rebranded over the next nine months. Here's Claire Barber, MHK. Food security is, is a number of different areas. So there's the day-to-day food security where the boat does go and we know that actually the provider of the stores isn't actually the most important part in that but it's about the ability to bring things in, the ability to have a number of different stores in a number of geographical areas that can support people in being able to purchase the right products or access the products. There's also the ability for people to access them based on the cost point, based on their own income, and the ability to be able to get products that actually provide the right nutritional value for them. And then you come to the piece that is what most people, I think, for them is food security, is what happens if something disrupts that normal position that we have, such as, as you say, the boat can't sail. That piece, and there's a number of elements 
elements around it. Some are around storage facilities, some are around the stocks that people hold in their own homes even, and some are around the stocks that are held with our supermarkets. So it's a piece of the jigsaw, but it's not the only piece of the jigsaw. And it would absolutely be something we'd seek to work with Tesco's to understand where they would fit within that. The worries that exist for producers, certainly those producers where, for example, a majority of their product at the minute would go into ShopRite, and yet they don't have those links in with Tesco's accepting sometimes when, for example, the boat doesn't sail and they need to have far more consistency if that's to be a valid route for them to market. But actually, I think those are the really important conversations for us as government to have with producers, for us to then be able to take that conversation to Tesco in that on the days when the boat doesn't sail, if they want to know those people are there to provide that product, they also have to support them year round. And as I say, Tesco's absolutely showing a real keenness to have those local products in their store. And it's now about us making sure that we facilitate as best as we can the right outcomes for those producers and ultimately for us all here on the Isle of Man. Manx Care says it's setting aside time to deal with patients at Hillside Dental Practice who've been waiting for a routine dental examination for over two years. The health body's taking over the Douglas surgery from December. Chief Exec of Manx Care, Teresa Cope. Maintaining a, a continuity of service and ensuring that we have a high quality service for those 6,600 patients who are registered with Hillside dental services was our priority. There was the option of trying to get someone else to take that contract with effect from the 1st of December, but we felt this was a good option for Manx Care to consider. We took that through the board earlier on this week and, and have agreed to take on the running of Hillside Dental Services for at least the next 12 months. There's 6,600 patients that are part of that practice. Do you know how many of those patients are actually overdue their routine checks? No, not exactly. That's the sort of the due diligence and the work we're doing at the moment. It's early days. We will work quickly to ensure that we have as a comprehensive service up and running from December at Hillside Dental as what we possibly can. Do we have any idea how much this is going to cost Manx Care? Well, it, we absolutely have to make sure it is cost neutral because there is no more funding in the system available. So what we're doing is taking the value of the contract and reinvesting that in the service. So we would ideally like to put more resourcing and more money into dental services, but that money isn't available at the moment. But what we can do is take the, the value of the contract that we would have previously had uh, with Regent Care and put that into uh, the running of this service. And and as I say, we are hoping to retain many of the staff that currently work there and be able to build that service uh, within the existing financial resourcing that we have. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. 22 minutes now before six, live from Douglas in the Isle of Man. According to a new report, every area of the British Isles has seen an increase in the number of companies which are struggling. Apart from the Isle of Man. The story from Dave Moore. The London-based Institute for Turnaround's latest societal impact report says the Isle of Man's the exception when it comes to the trend of increasing numbers of distressed companies within the past year. They report the number of Manx-based firms in this category has dropped from 28 to 22 from the second quarter of 2022 to the second quarter of 2023, a decrease of 21%. Distressed companies are businesses facing financial difficulties and are at risk of bankruptcy bankruptcy or insolvency. According to the IFT, the Channel Islands has seen the highest rise of struggling firms with 44% in this area. Meanwhile, every part of the United Kingdom has also recorded an increase over the past year, with Wales the largest at 15%, followed by Yorkshire and the North East, both with 11%. The reason the Isle of Man isn't struggling like elsewhere could be due to the island's differing economic and tax structures, with a focus on insurance, banking, financial and business services, along with gaming, and a low tax economy, plus a standard income tax rate rate of 0%. However, while it's seemingly good news for the Isle of Man, it's worth noting that the pool of Manx companies is much smaller than those elsewhere and is therefore more difficult to apply wider issues around distress in the economy given the small sample size. The IFT's report shows manufacturing, construction and retail are the businesses with the highest demand for support. The Institute for Turnaround is designed to try to provide help for underperforming organisations and they say inflation's the main concern among firms which continues to bite in the Isle of Man with the 
Consumer Prices Index increasing by 0.3 to 5.7% in September. The unique UNESCO Biosphere Isle of Man celebrated its fifth year today by recognising businesses and organisations that adopt sustainable practices. Five winners were announced at the Manx Museum in the Energy, Engagement, Environment, Economy and Education categories. My name's Aileen Clegg and I'm a class teacher at the Bun School Gilgach and we won the award for education. As a school we try and make sure that the environment is part of all of the topics that we teach. We have a kind of ethos of treading lightly and living sustainably which we bring into our school garden. Uh, Captain Mackenzie, I'm here backing up uh, Tom Durrant and his grandson who uh, won the prize for the film Grandad and Pierre. He spent an awful lot of time, Reuben, and the end result has been shown all over Britain already. So I'm Lynn Merriman. I'm a very, very small part of the Manx Blue Tits and we won in the enjoyment category. I was absolutely amazed because the competition was so, so strong. I really didn't think we would win. But I'm also so proud and so pleased because I think the more people that know about us, the more people can engage with us. We talk to each other, we help each other out, we support each other. Like I say, we're challenging fears and it's, it just ultimately helps your self-esteem. I am Kimberly Sorby from Man Waste Recycling Limited and we were the winner of the environment category. We only started four years ago so and what we've achieved we're really proud of and it's lovely to see that we're now being recognised for that as well. Hi, I'm Jason Buckley. I'm the uh, facilities manager from Zurich International and we won the energy category. Looking at the entrance in the energy category this year, I didn't think we had it. I'm thrilled to have it after on the second year um, it just sort of shows that the drive forwards that we're and the journey that we're on toward net zero it's uh, greg easton managing director of uh, ravenscroft on the isle of man and uh, we won the award in the um, uh, economy category i think for the investment sector that i represent there's so much more we can do to invest sustainably um, and that's a bit that excites me Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Motor vessel Manxman departed Hesham at 19 minutes past two. She'll be into Douglas in the next 10 15 minutes or so and then on to the Lynx Pen. This evening's departure, 8 15, Ben McCree heads to Hesham, arriving there just before midnight. The 0 02 15 departure from Lancashire heads back to Douglas and arrives at about six o'clock tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning's departure, Mangsman heads to Hesham at 8.45 in the afternoon. Mananan leaves at 2 o'clock for Liverpool. Follow the Steam Packet on Twitter for the latest sailing information. An Andreas man's been banned from contacting his ex-girlfriend after subjecting her to more than 100 unwanted phone calls over a four-day period. The story from Tessa Hawley. Stefan Kelly of Cool Veg appeared at Douglas Courthouse from police custody where he pleaded guilty to harassment. The court was told the 25-year-old had split up with the woman after seven and a half years in July. She'd blocked him on social media and from contacting her via the phone. However, on the 6th of October, October, Kelly made 13 phone calls from a withheld number between 10.30 in the morning and 6.25 that evening. He also sent her messages, including one which said, I'll kill myself and it will be on you. The following day, he made 85 further calls and on the 8th of October, another 13. He also continued messaging her, telling her that he'd kill himself and make her life hell. On the 9th of October, Kelly sent the woman messages from outside her workplace, telling her he was waiting for her, adding, see you soon. She phoned the police and Kelly was arrested. He told officers he'd wanted to see her in person to resolve their issues and wasn't attempting to scare her. A probation officer told the court the stonemason had spent his 25th birthday in custody, adding, Mr Kelly accepts he's overstepped the mark. He regrets his actions. Kelly's advocate told the court it was a misguided attempt to win back her affections after ending the relationship, adding, he is remorseful. Deputy High Bailiff Rachel Braidwood told Kelly his conduct had been intensive, adding, your behaviour was extremely concerning and must have caused real distress. Ordering him to work with the probation service for 12 months, she also imposed a 12-month restraining order which bans him from contacting the woman. Kelly must also pay prosecution costs of £125. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At a quarter to six, GSK has agreed to settle another lawsuit
lawsuit concerning its discontinued heartburn treatment, Zantac. The drug's giant confirmed today. In a brief statement, the blue chip said it reached a confidential agreement in the Cantley Harper case in California, which had been due to start trial on the 13th of next month. It's also settled the three remaining breast cancer bellwether cases in America, meaning GSK, the former GlaxoSmithKline, will now be dismissed from the cases. The firm note of the settlement reflect the company's desire to avoid the distraction related to protracted litigation. And for a full daily market report, go to RamseyCrookall.com. The high street giant Next is understood to be close to securing a deal to buy the fashion chain Fat Face. If it goes ahead, it'll mean Next, which has 500 high street shops, of course, including one in Strand Street, Douglas, owning Fat Face's 200 stores. The acquisition will be agreed this week, according to Sky News, which first reported the two were close to a deal. It'll mark the latest in a run of high street buys for Next, which has snapped up several chains, including fashion chain Jewels. Last year, Next bought the furniture brand Made.com and a minority stake in the baby goods store chain Jojo Mamam Bebe, and more recently increased its stake in the fashion chain Rice from 51% to 72%. Next has been using the purchases to beef up its so-called Total Platform, a suite of online services for third-party brands. Earlier this year, Next bought the floral fashion brand Kath Kidston, but didn't take the stores. The Stock Market Report, brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European stock markets were lower after clocking their best one-day performance in nearly a year. The dollar was broadly flat. Oil fell as fears of disruption to supplies due to the conflict in the Middle East receded a day after top OPEC producer Saudi Arabia pledged to help stabilise the market. And gold hit a two-week peak. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London, reporting down just over a tenth of a percent at 7,620. The DAX in Frankfurt up a quarter of a percent at the close at 15,459. The Dow Jones Industrial in America down almost a tenth of a percent at 33,713. The NASDAQ Tech Stocks Index up just over a third of a percent at 13,610. The S&P 500 in Chicago broadly flat up barely at two hundredths of a percent at 4,359. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar 23 cents, one euro 15.8 cents and 23 South African rand 13.4 cents. In commodities, gold is up seven tenths of a percent at $1,872 per troy ounce and a barrel of Brent crude down almost two percent at $85.93. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house, of the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. <laughs> you should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. The Isle of Man in 30 minutes. Update on Manx Radio with Andy Wynn. Anyone's family, families for safer drug control, held a meeting in Douglas last night to discuss the Isle of Man's current approach to illegal substances. It believes by regulating the drugs market and creating a controlled space with medical professionals available to advise and support users, it'll reduce the risks some people face. MLC Dawn Kinnish was there. I'm delighted that Jane came from the Transform Drug Policy Foundation because I think it's time that we took a fresh view on drug policy. Uh, I think it's very clear that since the, um, the policy, on the war on drugs policy uh, it hasn't worked. It's, uh, we are exposing the health of our children. We're exposing them to danger. We've got organised cram- uh, crime on the island, organised gangs. Uh, it's a growing problem. It's a growing problem with violence. Um, I, I stand here not just as an MLC but as a, as a parent. You know, I have four children. I've seen the um, the risks presented to my children. So yeah, I think it's it's refreshing to see this. It's good that Transform deliver policies on how to legalise and different models that work for different jurisdictions. So I think there's um, good conversations ahead to be had. Manx Radio Sport. Faster my Dave Moore. Faster my 
It looks like Dow Racing will not be competing in next year's TT. In a statement announcing the signing of Danny Buchan for the British Superbike Championship, the Isle of Man-based team says they'll be focusing fully on that series in 2024. Earlier this year, they parted company with Dean Harrison, with whom they won the senior TT in 2019. Staying with motorcycle racing, and John McGuinness will be riding for Malenko by Paget's Honda this weekend at Brands Hatch. The 23-time TT race winner replaces the injured Manxman Connor Cummins in the National National Superstock Championship class. As for next year, team boss Clive Paget says while it's too early to announce who will be riding for them, they'll definitely be at the TT. Yeah, I think it is too soon. The only thing that we can tell you is that we will be there. The greatest race in the world, the biggest platform in the world. No, we uh, we, we will be there. Meanwhile, Peveril Motorcycle Club has received £20,000 worth of funding from the Manx Lottery Trust, which will go towards the development of its trials park and motocross track. Based at Knockfroy in Santon, they'll be able to hire a digger, rebuild the existing layout, and buy track materials, including rocks and logs. The redevelopment is required due to the increase in riders using the track since it was last revamped three years ago. And finally, a mini-series about the Isle of Man TT has been nominated for the forthcoming Sports Pro OTT Awards. Between the Hedges is shortlisted in the best original content category. The eight episodes cover all aspects of the event and features many of the stars who take part and has attracted almost two million views. The winners of the awards will be announced at the end of November. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronald's Way, the 10 to 6 Logan Air from Manchester won't be in until 5 past 6, 6.30. EasyJet from Belfast International is on time. The 10 to 8 Logan Air from London City, not in until 9 o'clock. 20 past 8 Logan Air from Liverpool, delayed until 25 to 9. And the 25 to 9 EasyJet from London, Gatwick, currently scheduled on time. Outbound... The uh, 6.25 Logan Air to Liverpool won't be going out until 25 to 7. The 7 o'clock EasyJet to Belfast International is on time. And the 5 past 9 return EasyJet to Gatwick showing on time. Newcastle Town Road still closed between Spring Valley Roundabout and the bottom of Richmond Hill for resurfacing. Hillside Avenue Douglas closed through to Circular Road for adjacent office window replacement. Temporary lights on Glen Crutchery Road at the roundabout with Victoria Road for resurfacing. Temporary lights at the junction of Queen's Road and Park Road in Port St Mary for gas main work. In Onkun, Little Mill Road and Balakotia Road closed for ditching work. Temporary lights at Cool Road in Bratton near the Alabama Business Park for drainage work and lights too on Farrant's Way in Castletown for pavement work. Station Road Port Air enclosed between Brideson Street and Strand Road for repairs to the crossing area. There's a temporary bus stop there as well. Temporary lights in Greber on the main road between Greber Bridge and Bala Crane for ducting work and the matrix signs showing no problems on the mountain road. HH Motorcycles.im for all your motorcycle requirements. Southgate Industrial Estate, opposite Keyside Tires. Call 665646. Around 800 school students are expected to take part in this year's STEM Fest. It's hoped to inspire students to take up science, technology, engineering and maths subjects. With the story, John Moss. We just opened the door here of the central hall of the villa and it is buzzing in there. With me is Sarah Ennett, one of the people who's organising this. A lot of take up here. What is this for? What is its raison d'etre? STEM Fest is really there to inspire our young people uh, about their thinking about their career choices. There they are come so a few many. Of them now. Yes, indeed. You having a good time so far, guys? Yes, thank you. Brilliant. They're enjoying themselves, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, there's so many amazing careers on the Isle of Man in tech, in science, in engineering, and in maths, and that's what the STEM means. So we're here with yeah. lots of exhibitors. But if we just go, go through, because obviously a lot of emphasis on hands on. In the centre there, there looks like a suspension bridge has been built. What's that about? That's right, Construction Isle of man have got this brilliant activity to show children how to be safe and building and thinking about those engineering principles etc so it is very much hands-on we're trying to recreate that science fair experience that we don't have on the islands for our pupils our primary school pupils to come and enjoy themselves but what's at the end of this exercise how can you tell if it's been a success do you talk to the children what yeah we do we we survey the schools and the children to see what they've learned you know have they had their eyes opened about the wealth of opportunity that's available on the island? Um, so yes, it's very much a measurable. To take up being in recent in last in the last time. So we have roughly 400 pupils on each of the two days that it's on from our primary schools. And have you looked back in other previous years? 
Yeah, so it ran last year really successfully and it was about the same level last year. Did you talk to the kids afterwards and say, are you still interested? Were you inspired? That, that's a really good point. You know, it's important to follow up. We, we want to inspire more people to stay on the island and enjoy the lovely careers that are here. Um, but it needs to be not a one-time thing. We do need to keep inspiring year on year. So we're really grateful to all the fantastic businesses and government departments that come along, give their time up to, to do that, you know, to get the kids excited about it. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit Simcox.com or call 690-300. An Arbery and Russian commissioner says a public meeting held about the government's strategic plan was an opportunity to understand what could happen to the two parishes in the future. Here is that commissioner, Jane Glover. It was an extremely positive meeting. Um, excellent turnout from members of the public. Um, I think there are a lot of things that the general public don't understand and appreciate and tonight we gave them that opportunity to find out a bit more um, and to ask the questions that have been playing on their mind so a very good positive meeting I think a lot of people got more knowledge um, and for some you could tell it obviously opened up more questions because they didn't have the background knowledge that we as commissioners do Um, it's made me think and I've just said to a couple of people that perhaps more government departments should do things like this. It shouldn't take necessarily the commissioners to have to organise this for the public. Um, I think they would win the public over a lot better that way if they did that. There were obviously some um, specific things that were referred to, but there are more general things as well. People um, in the area, it is rural. Aubrey and Russian are rural parishes, and they are genuinely concerned about how the place that they love is going to be affected and they want to try and understand more about what the government's thinking is and how it will directly affect their lives. That's it for update tonight. Compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department, thanks to newsreader Siobhan Fletcher, producer Amy Griffiths, Howie Kane's here with Spotlight after six and the greatest six with Chris Kinley at 6.30. W-I-N-T